Oh, boy, am I pooped. You're pooped? I almost had a punch-up with old Mrs. Archer today. That nasty little dachshund of Pearl Lynch's tried to bite me. Oh, I'd have it put down. Is that what you tell Simon and Terence whenever they have a patient they don't like? Yep. They don't take any notice. <laughs> I really am very tired. Well, at least you've got youth on your side. You must be low. It's not often you admit you're older than me. Well, of course I'm older. I'm your mother. Yeah, but that's the only reason you admit it. Unkind. Well, at least I was a very young mother. <laughs> oh, did you find out what Mr. Harris wants done with his dog? Oh, darling, I completely forgot to ask Simon to find out. We've been flat out all day. Why don't you ask Simon yourself? He's not exactly breaking a leg to see me these days. I thought that was what you wanted. Why don't you go and see him? I might give him a ring. Ask him to see Mr. Harris for me tomorrow. Oh, you can't ring. The phones have been out all afternoon. Oh. Was well, he still at the clinic? He was surrounded by a great stack of reference books when I left. Well, I might go down there. Good idea. Mrs. Archer, it's perfectly safe to take those tablets. Yeah, look, they're exactly the same one as Dr. Elliot prescribed for you last time. Yeah, I'm sure. You're welcome. Bye. How long have the phones been on? They haven't been off. Oh. Uh, Fatso and I were doing some research. Hmm. You're looking very healthy, good little boy. I do my best. Hmm. Well, I just came round because Mum said, well, I thought, well, it doesn't really matter anyway. Um, I came to see you about Eldred Harris. What about him? Well, he's in hospital, and I've got his dog, and I was just wondering what he wanted me to do with it. I don't know. I know you don't know. Well, why don't you ask Eldred Harris? Why didn't I think of that? Listen, if I can help, I'd be delighted. It's not every day you come down to the clinic to see me. I didn't come to see you. I take it Eldred can have visitors. I'm sure he'd like to see you. Vicky, have out a cup of coffee. I'll get one at the hospital. Foreign object lodged in the esophagus. Oh, it's you. Oh, couldn't you show a little bit more enthusiasm? Okay, I was rude to you the other night. I apologise. And I you... was rude to you about what was the name? Uh, and... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Me too. Friends? Friends. Well, what do you think it is? Mm? Oh, probably a bone. I'll have to operate. Hmm. Poor little fella. Who's is he? Eldred Harris. Ah, this is Zeus. When are you going to do the op? Straight away. Well, would you like me to give you a hand? Have you got time? No, but I'd like to do it. All right, you can do the anaesthetic. I've already weighed him. There's the esophagus. The bone's embedded in the membrane. Oh, he's doing well. Pulse and blood pressure are normal. I have to dig it out of the lining. Got it. That'll teach you to gobble your food without chewing it. That was a pretty neat job. Well, surgery was one of my better subjects at college. I thought I assisted quite nicely. You were adequate. Adequate. I think we'd better sew the patient up before we start congratulating each other. We'd look pretty silly if he died while we were patting each other on the back. Quite right. The least I can do is make you a cup of coffee. You know, Vicky, I'm, I'm glad we're friends. Yes, so am I. I mean, I wouldn't like it if we weren't to be, to be friends. No, I wouldn't either. It's the phone. Ignore it. You're on call. Hello, Vicky Dean. Yes, Beverly. Yes, he is. Beverly. Mum wants you down at the clinic. A patient of yours wants to see you. Oh, it can't be that important. Uh, mm -hmm. Tell her to give her an aspirin. Says it's an emergency. Mm hmm. Tell her I'll be right there. He'll be right there. What's the matter? Nothing. Dirty hands. I've been cleaning fish. I don't care. Listen, uh, Vicky. 
Um, I've got to put this in the oven. Why are you being so affectionate, Simon? I've been trying to get away all day. Why? I want to see you. Hi. Hi. That's not what I meant by see you. Oh. Um, it's nearly dinner. Mum's having a shower. Vicky, yesterday we were... Right, having... and today we're not. I don't get it. Correct. Listen. You're the doctor and I'm the vet. And we've both got certain responsibilities. And this is a small town. So? So we can't have both doctors behaving like... Hello, Simon. Oh, I'll be having wine. I was just telling Vicky about Terence and his truck driver. Oh, yeah. Hardly the image you'd expect for a country doctor. Oh, I thought she was wonderful. Just what Terence needs. Hmm. I know what you mean. Uh, are we still going to the dinner dance Saturday night? Yes. Is Terence taking Marta? Oh, I hadn't thought about that. Now that Trudy's here. He wouldn't take a truck driver. Well, not any old truck driver. Oh, poor Terence. I can just see how it happened. He's such a gentleman, so polite. A woman like that would move in and take him over straight away. He wouldn't know how to handle it. Oh, what a good, brave girl. Will you stop talking to that pig and listen to what I'm saying? I know I'm listening. I know exactly how you feel. You do not. I'm the town vet and Simon's the local doctor. Oh, look, what's that got to do with it? Well, we've got an image to uphold, like Terence has. Oh, you mean doctors and vets don't... Molly, you know what I mean. I'm not sure. Well, we've got an image to uphold. And that... that truck driver, she's chasing him. Look, what's so extraordinary about that? Everybody's chasing Terence. Will you stop arguing? I need sympathy and support. All right. But I, I just think you're being too analytical. You rationalise it too much. Enjoy yourself with Simon. If it works, terrific. If it doesn't, you're just back to being good friends. It's easy to say. Oh, you're too hung up. Me hung up? All right, all right. I take it back. Sympathy and support. Look at Bob Hatfield. Yeah. His wife refused to come with him. He's on his own. I don't blame her. Sister Dean. Hello, how are you? Lovely to see you. Oh, Councillor Mills. Lovely dress. Oh, yes, I'd love to dance, Frank. Oh. I wonder how Doris is getting on. Oh, Molly, I'm sure she'll be all right. You want to dance? Not yet. You want a drink? Mm. Uh, here you go, this one for you, one for you. Oh, I don't think you've met Brendan. This is Trudy. Brendan, oh, Brendan. Why don't you sit down over here, Trudy? Thanks, there you go. Hi, Trudy. I'm Molly. Hi, how are you? My wife. Yeah, we've got ten chooks, a pig, a calf, and a dog. Not bad, eh? Yeah, just building up the livestock little by little, getting the hang of it. Good idea. What sort of truck do you drive? I got a turbo charge V8. Baggy drive with a triaxle trailer. Great truck. Oh, you like trucks, do you? I like trucks. Yeah? I like your dress. Thanks. I like your hairpiece. <laughs> when you've been driving for 20 hours straight, I can tell you, you get more than a little shirty when some joker's hog on the right lane. So, I get up this joker's exhaust pipe, give him a bit of a nudge, and a blast on the air horn. <laughs> ma, ma. Bet you that's scary. What'd he do? He booked me. He was a cop. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen to this one. This is a real beauty. There was a truckie from Perth called Jack the Ripper. Jack was a real beauty. I mean, he is a hypochondriac. You guys would have loved him. The people on his tumour's cancer. <coughs> Headache was a brain tumour. You'd hear about his bowel movements and his blood pressure. Anyway, Jack's coming back from Perth one night, a real wet night. The road's pitch black. And Jack's a little bit out of it because he's been a long haul and he's been on the booze and the pills. What's got into you, Terence? What do you mean? Across the road. This no, is a small no, town. You know what the people killed. are like? Yeah. Believe it or not, Brendan, you've changed. Changed. Anyway, cut a long story short. Jack hits the horse head on. The horse goes up through the windscreen, into the cabin, all over Jack's lap. <laughs> One great bloody mess everywhere. Jack looks down to his lap, and holy hell, he thinks it's his own guts. <laughs> so what's he do? He starts picking it up and tucking it back into his shirt. <laughs> oh, great bloody handfuls of the stuff. <laughs> Uh, no thanks, Bob. Thanks, not Bob. drinking. Why not? Uh, we're on call. No booze for the doctors. They're drinking. Uh, no. You a poster or something? Oh, hey, listen, mate. Uh... Bludger them. Come All on, doctors are bludgers. Come on, come and sit down. Listen, mate. 
It's not easy. Well, it's the knack. You've got to have the knack, otherwise it's no good. Here, let me. Okay. Here we go. I think I broke a tooth. Oh, no. No, I didn't. Oh, look, we're not getting anywhere. Hey, uh, can I have a go? Sure. I've been watching my dentist. <laughs> not as easy as it looks. That's right, isn't it? Here, let's have another go. No, let me. No, no, no wait a minute. No, just uh... a minute. Now, I think I know someone who can handle this. Stand aside, gentlemen. Got it! Thank you. Strong little thing, aren't you? No, not strong. It's the neck. Right. Got a sick. Stupid looking hand basin. <laughs> what? Oh, Molly's new bidet. Bob's doing the plumbing. <laughs> Mum's asleep. Who's going to kiss you goodnight? Do you have anyone in mind? Perhaps I could think of someone. You wake her up. Oh, you're no fun. I'll make you some coffee. We don't seem to be getting very far, do we? How do you mean? Well, our relationship, it all seems very unprivate somehow. Well, I can't help it if I live with my mother. Why aren't you one of those birds with a nice, cosy little pad with a stereo set and cushions all over the floor? Why aren't you one of those guys that doesn't live in a hotel room? Probably wouldn't do me any good anyway. You never know. What I should do is race you off down to Sydney one night, shack up in a seedy motel and indulge in a whole weekend of carefree abandon. The pubs, the clubs... Sounds good. ...theatre, jazz dives and discos. Hee-ho. You'd never do it. Which weekend? What? No, don't mock me. Which weekend? You mean it? Has to be this weekend or the one after next. You're not kidding? No, I'm not kidding. This weekend? What about, uh, your mum? You could ask her, but I don't think she'll come. She's a bit past it. I don't believe it. You're so wicked. Shh, wicked, wicked. <laughs> what are you doing on the weekend, Cheryl? Nothing in particular. What do you have in mind? I could fix it so there's never a dull moment. That sounds ominous. Who are you lining up for me? Atto. That wombat? He's very affectionate. He digs holes. So put him somewhere you want dug up. I don't want anywhere dug up. I like it just the way it is. Two days, that's all. Where are you going? Uh, Sydney. Well, that was a snap decision. Yeah, something came up. Hmm, did it now. I just hope you're fit for work on Monday morning, that's all. Oh, what are you talking about? One Valley Clinic. Oh, yes, Bev. Thank you. Hello? Uh, just one moment, I'll put you through. The Sydney Hilton Hotel, Dr. Bowen. Would you like me to put her through to your private room? I'll take it in there. Uh, what about Fatso? I'll take Fatso. I'll bring him in on Friday. <laughs> Why not? No one's going to book me into the Hilton for the weekend. <laughs> Did you have a good time last night? Mm, it was fine. Food wasn't much, but we had some nice wine. Simon managed to push his chair back into a passing pudding trolley. <laughs> How do you, uh, you know, feel about him these days? Simon? Oh, he's all right. I like him more than I used to. Nothing serious, though? No, nothing like that. What's with the third degree? You and I are having a little visitor this Friday. Who's that? Fatso. It appears that Dr. Bowen is going to Sydney for one of those weekends. Oh, and what sort of weekend's that, Mum? Well, you know. Shouldn't I have told you? Well, you said there was nothing between you. Doesn't sound like you approve. Oh, I don't know. I suppose he's got to sow a few wild oats. Yeah, I suppose so. Could be a bit more discreet about it, though. Beverly knows already he's booked into the Sydney Hilton for the weekend. The Hilton? And that means the whole town knows. Now, he can't really afford that in a town this size. I'll say. Anyway, you and I are lumbered with fatso. Oh, I don't want to trade him up. 
Martha, would you be home Saturday afternoon? I have to go out. Uh, uh-uh. You have to cope with it yourself, Mum. Oh. Why? Where are you going? Sydney. Morning, Shul. Everything under control? I believe so. Ah. Anything wrong? No. Nothing at all. Good. By the way, there's a message from the Hilton Hotel in Sydney returning your call. They regret they have no rooms available with water beds. Thanks. I don't think it would have impressed her very much anyway. She's always preferred a nice, firm mattress ever since I can remember. I was going to tell you. Why bother? None of my business. Yeah, but I was going to tell you anyway. Terence in? No. He's still at the hospital. Good. Oh, good morning. Can I help you? I trust so. My name is Robert Bowen. I'm Simon's father. I was wondering if I might have a word with him and he's free. Well, I think that could be arranged. Uh, you're Dr. Bowen, no? You're a specialist, so that means you're Mr. Bowen. Mr. will suit me fine. Well, I'm Shirley Dean. I am delighted to meet you, Mr. Bowen. We've heard a lot about you. How do you do, Shirley? I'll give him a buzz. He hasn't got anyone with him at the moment. Are you sure it's convenient? I could come back. It's fine. They're all waiting for Dr. Elliot. Dr. Bowen, you have a visitor. I think it's someone you'll be quite pleased to see. Why don't you come and see for yourself? Okay. I hope you're right. Uh, Dad, what are you doing here? Excuse me, I'll just put Fatso back. Hello, Simon. Didn't know you'd gone into veterinary. Ah, uh, he's just passing through. How are you? Mm. Well, and you? Fine, fine. Fancy seeing you here. Yes, I'm sorry I couldn't give you any notice. Took a short holiday. I've been staying out of the Smythe King's property. You remember them? Ah, uh, yeah, of course. Oh, Andrew sends his regards, by the way. Anyway, I was already on my way back when it occurred to me I might just as well take the long way around. Pay my wayward son a visit. Ah, uh, you see that? I'm an afterthought. The truth of the matter is, Shirley, he never comes to see us, so I thought I'd better seize the opportunity. Children are notoriously neglectful. I took the precaution of installing mine under my own roof. This one couldn't wait to get out. Still, I'm sure he'd be delighted to entertain his old dad for the weekend. Are you staying here? Well, yes. Unless you're bored with me already. Oh, no, no, not at all. Well, they seem to be feeding you all right out here in the sticks anyway. Ah, uh, eating's the chief leisure time activity. Oh, I don't know. There are other diversions. Yes, they don't come up very often, though. Is there anything you want me to cancel, Doctor, now that you'll be spending the weekend with your father? That's very thoughtful of you. <laughs> Best little secretary in the world. Uh, yes, thank you. Perhaps you wouldn't mind cancelling all my previous engagements. You won't have to worry about Fatso now, will you? Sorry. Yes, Bev, that'll be fine. Get her to bring him in any time. If I'm not here, Molly will look after it. Oh. I see. No, I understand. Uh, well, in that case, you'd better bring him in in the morning. I'll be out after lunch. OK, bye, Biff. Hi. Hi. What's up? Oh, nothing. Stupid people. Beverly's mother won't bring a dog in unless I'm here. She doesn't trust Molly. That's ridiculous. She's not the only one. Oh. Uh, does Molly know? Haven't said anything yet. What can I say? You're scaring away all my customers. Yeah, it's a bit tricky. It certainly is. Anyway, tomorrow night we'll be far, far away in the big smoke, millions of miles away from this tiny town. It's petty problems, won't we? That was a general idea. We won't. It's all off. Oh. I'm afraid so. My father turned up a few hours ago. He's staying the weekend. Couldn't you tell him you were going away for a weekend of carefree abandon? Not really. I only see him once a year. Anyway, Cheryl was sitting there like the cat that swallowed the canary. She's got an unhealthy attitude towards our relationship, that mother of yours. She knows we were going away, I meant to tell you. Well, now she knows we're not. Be great to see your father. Yeah, great. What about your mate, Simon Bowen? They didn't exactly roll up the red carpet for him. No, poor old city boy. Yes, now his father's pinched one of his patients from him. Operating tomorrow morning, I believe. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah. Mr. Robert Bowen has certainly thrown a spanner in the works, must one be, way or another. Must be awful trying to live up to the reputation of a famous parent. Well, darling, at least you can't accuse me of saddling you with that problem. No. 
Notorious is the word I'd use. Well, at least I'm not boring. Got the x-ray. Let's hope he didn't complicate his fracture during that fit. Not good? Oh, there, look. Hairline crack of the temple bone. has been bleeding underneath. Could be a clot, compression of the brain. Well, it explains the fit. Time's a major factor now. Brendan, how soon before the theatre's ready? We're in a bit of a rush, mate. Look, I've got a high-priority job here, extradural hemorrhage. We're going to have to drill a burr hole. Right, I'll tell the matron. I'll give you a yell when we're ready. Look, make it as fast as you can, mate. Damn. We're going to have to shoot him full of antibiotics. Vicky, see if you can find a nurse. Not too good, mate. How are they feeling now? Well, I reckon whatever you gave me is beginning to take effect. Take about ten minutes for the needle to work. Like to do the dressing? I'm ready. I don't know what we're going to do with you, Frank. There's no spare beds and you're going to need some looking after. Well, it won't be easy being all by myself. Maybe one of the part-time nurses could keep an eye on him. Ah, oh, there's still a lot he couldn't manage. A man feels humble when he has to depend on other people. Oh, come on, Mum, you know there's an obvious solution. Oh, I suppose you could move in with us. Sure. Strictly nurse and patient, Frank. Oh, I wouldn't expect anything else, Shell. This is really good of you. I know. That's my problem. I am all heart. <laughs> Sorry, Frank. For the first time today, I'm the bearer of glad tidings. Molly has found the missing boy. Oh, that's Great. a relief. Oh, I'll get Fred and the boys to call the search off then. His face is a bit of a mess, but at least he's in one piece. Could you have a look, please, Doctor? Yeah, no rest for the wicked. He's going to need x-rays for probably fractured cheekbones. Oh, I reckon you could help. Facial x-rays aren't too easy. Give it a go. Thanks. I'll set it up for you. This is a hell of a way to get together. Yeah. You sleep all right? Fine, thank you. I'd still like to know where. None of your business. It uh, was on the floor, wasn't it? Vicky, I do wish you would keep your nose out of my sleeping arrangements. Then the same applies to you with me and Simon. No, it doesn't. I'm your mother. I'm supposed to poke my nose into such things. Uh, well, if you're that tired, I know this nice little place where you could rest up for a while. Oh, and where might that be? Barrigan. Barrigan? Last weekend it was Sydney. Yeah, well, we lost that one, but we could make up for it. Weekend's nearly over. Well, let's not waste any more time. Nope, I've got to cram in as much as I can about stud farms. Come to Burrigan with me and I'll teach you all you need to know about studs. Oh, really? Oh, don't knock it until you've tried it. No, honestly, Simon, I've made a big impression with the manager out at Yarraman Stud. Could mean big business for me. But don't they have their own vet? Yeah, it's a huge place. They could easily use two. And if I can get in with those horsey people, it could mean big money for me and I could expand and get in a partner and, and get more equipment and what's wrong? I'm looking for a certain lady who keeps telling me I'm too ambitious and too competitive. It's different. How? Well, a woman has to be more ambitious and competitive to um, overcome prejudice. So get off my desk and let me do some work. Yeah, well, I really didn't want to go to Burrigan either. I think I'm involved in my first child abuse case. What? Who? Well, I can't tell you that. Anyway, I can't prove it. Does Terence know? Uh-huh. He said to be sure of my facts. And are you? Oh, that's easier said than done. Well, if you really are worried, why not do something about it? Ask questions. Parents, neighbours. I can't go charging in there and accuse people of bashing their child. Well, I don't know what to suggest. No. You've got to worry about fame and fortune. Listen, if you really are worried and you can't ask questions, why not do it some other way? How? Well, I don't know, spook round a bit. Hang round the house. At least it's a start. That's in case you get lonely for me. Oh, hi, darling. Have a good sleep? You've got to be joking. You two nearly drove me up the wall last night. Oh, I know. I got about three hours sleep myself. Seriously, Mum, something's got to be done. He's got to go. I can't talk to you at home. He's always there and he's always tidying things. I like putting my dirty clothes on the floor. It's my floor. Oh, yes. Look, how bad do you reckon his hands are, really? They're well enough to empty ashtrays every five seconds. You're right. I'll talk to him tonight. He's got mm. to go. <clears throat> ah, and uh, pick up the bread I ordered. Uh, hi, Frank. Morning, Sister. Morning, Dr. Byrne. I must go. Don't forget about the bread. <clears throat> Can I Want me see to do the message, Sorry, huh? the quadruped patient. I think he said something about bread. 
Oh, 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 yes, Sergeant. I'll write you out a list. I'll put it on your account. See you later. Hi. Hi. Sorry I had to rush off before. You're forgiven. Coffee? Love one. Have to be a quickie. I've got to go out to Yarraman and check on that colt. Oh, that's right. How are you getting on out there anyway? Oh, good. Steve, I reckon the colt might have died if I hadn't... Oh, so it. it's Steve-o now, is it? Pretty pally, eh? I think I'd better come out there with you, put the Steve-o in his place. Oh, you don't have to worry. Our conversation only goes as far as champing teeth and scouring. Still, he's not a bad bloke. Till he starts on that kid of his. Oh? Huh? Yeah, he's really pushy with her. He drives her so hard. She's a sweet little thing. Wife doesn't help. She hasn't got the guts to stand up to him. The kid took a fall yesterday, taking a jump a professional at Borkat. Yeah, so I heard. Seems OK now. Uh, were you there when it happened? Yeah. She's lucky she didn't break a neck. You know, Yarraman's the biggest stud in the district. Well worth a look from all accounts. I'd like to come out there with you. Oh, Simon, I don't know. I'm just getting a foot in there. Tell him I'm the local vet groupie. He's lovely, isn't he? Yeah. Is he all right now? Good as gold. Pretty grand, eh? No! Ah! Oh! My God. What is it? What's happening? Mummy! Mummy, wait! Mummy! <laughs> What's going on, Mrs. Stevens? You all right? I'm fine. We're fine. Please don't worry about us. Everything's all right. Isn't it, Robbie? Make you glad you've given them away? Absolutely. You have, haven't you? Well, of course I have. It's a filthy habit. <laughs> and how's that gorgeous daughter of yours coping? Dr. Bowen, I am not one of those people who takes out my deprivations on others. Anyway, she's going away. Going away? Where? Down to Sydney for a week to a horse seminar. The father's suggestion. Oh, you mean you'll have to put up with Frank Gilroy all on your own? No, Doctor. Frank is almost recovered. He'll be going home before Vicky leaves. Ah. Good day. It's not, you know. The good news is I was highly recommended by Yarraman Stud during his absence. But he's got himself a new partner. Thanks, but no thanks. I really thought I was set there. New partner's an equine specialist. Hey, it's not the end of the world. All that stuff you picked up at the seminar won't go astray, will it? Oh, I'm not that upset. I think I've got a cold coming on. It's just that, well, I really thought I could be useful at Yarraman. Yeah, well, that's Wandon Valley for you. Just when you start to think it's not such a bad place, it goes sour on you. You too, not again. Ah, oh, it's this business with the Abbott brothers. I mean, can you believe it? Hmm, it's really awful. I feel really sorry for Doug. He's such a nice bloke. Keith too. People here really know how to put the boot in. Yeah, they were really upset when they heard. Vicky, you'd think they discovered a couple of axe murderers in their midst. Oh, they'll get over it. I suppose you can understand it in a way. What? Well... You know, if you had children. All I'm saying is that I can understand it. I've just spent hours sorting through all that. Now I've forgotten what I'm looking for. Can anyone join in this consultation? Uh-huh. Fatso doesn't care too much for the layman's opinion. So this is what you've been doing with your spare time lately? I've got plenty of things to catch up on, Vicky. Locking yourself in here every night since Keith died? I thought doctors were supposed to be beyond all that sort of thing. Yeah, well, this one isn't. Why don't you get yourself out a bit? Mum and Frank are going to the club tonight. Why not come? Half the town will be there. No, thanks. I'm asking you, inviting you, please. All right, since it's you. It's prawn night. Frozen prawns? I suppose so. Let's eat first. <laughs> You okay? You feeling better? How long was I out? Just a minute or so. Burning with a fever. Oh, freezing. I'm going to ring the doctor. Oh. Now, no ifs or buts, you're seeing him. You've been pushing yourself for too long. You need some proper treatment, not that fig coffee or whatever you've been having. Oh, Inglebert. I was holding him. I put him back in his cage. You did? I don't know who got the bigger shock, me or the snake. <laughs> Oh, Shirley, it's Molly Jones. I'm at Vicky's surgery. Yeah, she's got the flu or something and she felt a bit faint. Oh, not City Boy Bowen. 
Uh, no, 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 she's fine. She'll be all right. But um, I was wondering if you could send out one of the doctors and... Dr. Bowen? Not Dr. Bowen. Uh, yeah, I see. Would you mind telling her that, Shirley? Just a minute. Dr. Elliot's got a patient with him. Dr. Bowen's on his way. No! And your mum wants to talk to you. Dr. Bowen. Hello, Molly. How are you? Fit as a fiddle, thanks. Uh, Dr. Bowen's here, Victoria. Good morning. Now, oh, what seems to be the trouble? Flu. Mm-hmm. Well, let's have a look at you, shall we? Uh, Molly, uh, would you mind putting the jug on, making us all a cup of coffee? I don't want any coffee. I don't drink coffee. Uh, thank you, Molly. Molly, stay where you are. And why didn't you come and see me before this? I knew you weren't too well. You try to do too much. Every vet I've ever known is the same. They treat themselves with Bob Martins half the time. Yeah, well, it's no doubt you're running a temperature. Yeah, it's way up. Stick your tongue out. Vicky, for heaven's sake. Uh-huh. What do you mean, uh-huh? Sore throat? No. Headache? No. Lift up your arms a little. Any burning or scalding? Any what? Any burning or scalding when you pass water. Right, that's it. What do you want about? Sorry. I'm not going to have you asking questions like that. I'm a doctor. I don't care. Goodbye. I don't believe this. I'm sorry, Simon. I really am. I just can't. If I ever needed confirmation that this is a hick town, you've just proved it. Simon. I'll see myself out. He was really hurt. I know. Refused treatment? Just about threw me out of the house, that's all. What's wrong with the silly girl? Well, I don't know. She wouldn't even let me finish the examination. Well, no, Simon, I meant... Look, it wouldn't happen in the city, no way. Just out here in the sticks, the never-never. Well, maybe it's just that she thinks of you as a friend. Friend? Friend? You'd have thought I was Jack the Ripper. Simon. I'll see you in a few days, Dave. How's Vicky? What's the verdict? Attempts 38.5, no sign of glandular swelling, feels feverish. That's all I could find out before she asked me to leave. Hope you don't have that effect on all your female patients. Huh. Did Simon speak to you? Now, don't worry about Simon. He's tougher than he looks. I'm sure he's a good doctor, but... He's better than good. Now, you take my word for that. I just don't think he appreciates how lucky he is to be here. Maybe he'll get to like country practice. Do you like it? Are you happy? Happy in my word, yeah. Straight home, get some rest. Bye, Vicky. Bye. Hello, Simon. Hi, Vicky. <clears throat> Look who's been kind enough to call in and see you. Hello, Simon. Uh, come on, Frank, we'll have our coffee in the kitchen. No, I thought we'd just stay here and chat for a while. Or perhaps you'd like to go home? I'll help you with the coffee. You're forgiven, you know. You look ridiculous holding those flowers. Ah, uh, that was my whole intention. To look ridiculous, pathetic, vulnerable, horny. You ought to be struck off the register. I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings before. That's OK. How are you feeling, really? Are you asking as a friend or a doctor? Both. That's Vicky's ASOT and Brucella Tito. Brucellosis? Mm-hmm. I suspected it all along. Vicky wouldn't even think about it. I've never had a case before. I was tetracycline four times a day to control the symptoms and streptomycin intramuscularly to try to reduce the tendency to relapse. Uh -huh. For how long? About three weeks. Uh, are you going to... Oh, uh... sorry, I haven't got time today, mate. Then listen, hang on. Good uh... luck. I warned you about that cut on your hand. You must have had a tear in your glove for the bug to get in. So what's the treatment? Tablets four times a day. Oh. An ounce of prevention is better than three weeks treatment. Three weeks? I've got to take tablets for three weeks? Yeah, and that's the good news. You're kidding. The bad news is a needle in the backside once a day. You are kidding, Simon. I'm not laughing. Neither am I. Let's get one thing straight, Vicky. I'm here as your doctor, not as your friend. Simon. Take these. 
Where's Dr. Elliot? Dr. Elliot is busy on an urgent call. I'm stuck with this, Vicky. I don't like this any more than you do. There's no one else here. You're not going to give me a needle. We've been through this before. Vicky, I won't even think of it as your posterior. And Johnny Pierce picked up his dog. Thanks, Molly. No worries. How's the locum working out? Tom Hales, no complaints. You know, I, uh, I thought brucellosis was a disease that cows got. <laughs> yeah, well, they don't much anymore. We inoculate them against it. But it's an occupational hazard for vets. You get it by internally examining a cow. I must have got oh, this yeah, cut. Oh, yeah, I, I don't want to hear any more. I'll make some tea. Oh, has, um, has the doctor been today? No. Look at this. I've already had eight injections and I've got 13 more to go. I don't think I can stand it. Does it really hurt, does it? Yes. And just as he's about to put the needle in me, he moans, Oh, Victoria. <laughs> Wyndham Valley Clinic? Oh, Frank. No, I am eating. I think he's fine. Coming along. The club, tomorrow night. Oh, I couldn't possibly leave Vicky. I mean, she's not that well, Frank. Uh, look, I better go. The doctor wants to talk to me. Yes, Frank. Bye. Face it, Shirley. He's like a bulldog. He's got his teeth in and you can't shake him off. Any more slinging off at me about Frank Gilroy, and I'll tell Vicky that I'm quite able to give her daily brucellosis shots. Oh, Shirley, you wouldn't. I might. Right, I'm off. Wonder Valley Clinic. But just one moment. It's Barrigan. They've got the results on Margaret Skilton's test. Oh, great. I'll take it in my room. I'll be out for about an hour. Mrs. Kalusi first, then the Burks, then Miss Dean, last but not least. Make the most of it. Only 12 more injections to go. 13. You never know. She might even get to enjoy it as much as I do. <laughs> Goodbye. Well, your mother's not alone there, Bev. A lot of people think men make better vets than women. Beverly, did you ring up to give me a message or did you just ring to see how I was? Oh, Dr. Bowen's not coming. Dr. Elliot is? Oh, okay, Bev, okay, thanks. Bye. Oh, oh damn. Hello, Vicky. Hello, Dr. Elliot. Come in. Uh, Simon's tied up today, so I'm afraid you've got me. Oh, that's okay. I was just about to have a cup of coffee. Would you like one? Oh, why not? Yeah, I'd love one. Thanks. Simon tells me you've still not eating and you've lost weight. Not complaining. Mm. What about the aches and pains? Are they all gone? Yeah. When I finish this course of injections, what are the chances of the brucellosis recurring? Well, the streptomycin should stop that. Oh. Mrs. Anderson tells me that she had your locum out the other day, said he's very good. Hmm, so I've heard. Hello, feeling a bit redundant? And bored. I'm so bored. Yeah, well, you should rest. Let the antibiotics do their job. I know. It's just that I'm not a reader and I'm used to getting out and doing things, seeing people. Look, if you feel up to it, they'd be pleased to see you at the hospital. You could help your mother. She's cleaning today. Just as long as she's not cooking. <laughs> uh, nothing too taxing now. And no patient contact, of course. How about that? That'd be great. Thank you. And uh, if you feel like some fresh air, you could come out with me in my rounds in the afternoon. It'll be pretty dull. Oh, I'd love to. Thank you. Good. Shall we get this injection over with? Oh, Vicky, Simon's operating tomorrow. An appendectomy. It'll be his first solo operation in Wandon Valley. Uh, apart from a couple of emergencies. Ray, You nervous, darling? These hands were made for surgery. Look at that, steady as a rock. Of course, pity I'm left-handed. <laughs> Are you nervous? Yeah, a bit. Oh, come on, an appendectomy like falling off a log. Terence watching every move, you know how good he is. You'll be right. You've got the best medical team in Wandon Valley. You've got the only medical team in Wandon Valley. <laughs> Cheers. Good luck, Simon. Thanks. Hello, Fricky. You look nice. Don't you look nice, Cheryl? Oh, you do too, darling. 
Thought I'd save the doctor some trouble. Come down here and have my injection. Oh, Simon's over at the hospital. I came to see Dr. Elliot. Oh. He's on the phone to Sydney at the moment. Oh, I'll wait then. I haven't seen that outfit before. Some sort of special occasion? No. Finish, Jill. Oh, come in, Vicky. Sorry to keep you. You're looking very nice. Thank you. I thought I'd save you the trouble of making a call. Good. Yeah. Sorry. Terence Elliot. Oh, okay, yes, put it through. Hello? Uh, yes. Yes, I can make it then, I think. No, no, no problem at all. All right, we'll see you on the 18th. Oh, no, I think I'll drive. <laughs> okay, bye. More apologies. You must lead a pretty hectic life, especially with all those ladies trying to catch you. Oh, the phone call? <laughs> no, that was my wife in Sydney. Ah, oh. oh, this is the second last in the course. But you'll be glad when it's over. Yeah. Wow, dressed to kill. No jokes, I'm not in the mood for it. Matron Cortez. Feel like cooking? Not really. No, well, hang on, I'll take, I'll find you something. You've been to see Terence today? Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes, thank you. Thank you for calling. Well, the strike is over. All union members have been instructed to return to work. Saved by the bell. Hallelujah. Mm. Oh, I've really enjoyed working here. Oh, any time, Molly. Any time at all. Well, back to the farm, woman. Oh, uh, could you just perhaps finish the beds before you go? They don't start till tomorrow. Okie dokie. Thank you. Hang on, Tig. I'll give you a hand. I'll have a look at Mrs. Harper's veins next, please, matron. Yes, yes. Oh, I'll just go and prepare her for you, doctor. Mind if I join you? Well, I don't think I've got a great future as a diagnostician. I say appendicitis, and it turns out to be the pox. So you're not perfect. Oh, I wouldn't say that. We really ought to be celebrating the end of the strike. If I got down in a suitably appropriate position, like my knees, would you have dinner with me tonight, huh? Why not? <laughs> <laughs>